Good morning, year seven. It is Miss Sullivan here again. Um, I hope that everybody is, is doing okay. You're keeping well. Um, gosh, we're nearly at the end of the school year. Oh, this is my cat. <laughs> Say hello. Anyway, <laughs> back to the work. So um, we've now got um, only five weeks or so left of home learning um, and you have got some assessments coming up. So for art, um, there's not a formal assessment um, that's the same as your other subjects because you will do, you'll create um, an artistic outcome and I will be marking you on your skills for this project based on that creative outcome. So you are in fact going to be completing this final piece for the year um, over the series of the next four weeks and I'll be guiding you through it bit by bit. So you've now looked at what perspective drawing is and you should understand um, the key features of a perspective drawing, one point perspective um, and how that is used when drawing and creating a landscape along with um, building mark making skills, using different materials um, and painting. So today you're going to start drawing and sketching out your final piece. And then next week and the following few weeks, um, I will be guiding th you through painting it and then I'll be assessing the final outcome. So, first of all, I would like you to find a space in your book and answer these two questions. Um, so crossed over lines are given what's name and mark making is number one. And then number two is give an example of a material you could use to create pointillism a uh, pointillism effect for mark making. Um, before you complete those questions, um, and you put the date and title, I did want to celebrate and say well done um, for the fantastically neat mark making pages that I saw last week. Um, I particularly liked this one down here um, because I can tell that they use different materials and that they really experimented um with with the mark making to create the different techniques that worked very very well um equally these pages some really neat presentation um some experimenting going on here as well putting into practice the mark making so well done these looked fantastic and so did many others um a few were rushed so please make sure um that in the coming weeks you really slow it down with the tasks because this is going to be your final piece and it will be what i will give you an overall mark for the year on Okay, moving on to the main focus then, sketching out your final landscape today. Hopefully, by the end of the lesson, you will have a sketch, an outline of a sketch, something like this, really, really high quality. So you're going to need a few things to get started. You're going to need some inspiration. So I have taken a few images off the internet um, that are landscape focused, that inspire me. So I've taken a few from David Hockney um, because he does fantastic mark making as we've discussed and he's an artist that we've looked at. So there should be a bit of a David Hockney influence somewhere in your work. So I recommend you find a nice picture. You can do this on your phone, you can make like a photo collage. Um, there's a great app called Pick Stitch, P-I-C-S-T-I-T-C-H. So see if you can download that. It's a free app on your phone, but you can make like a photo collage. Um, so that could be something you could you could do and work from while you are doing this project because it is going to be needed for the next three or four weeks, maybe four. Um, I've then found some mountains that I liked. Another David Hockney piece, a completely different landscape, but I really like the perspective going down the lane. Um, this is a photo that I took, so you could work from your own. Um, obviously... In London, we don't live somewhere where there's lots of beautiful hills and mountains. So I don't want you to just take a random picture and just work solidly from that. I want you to combine a few because after all, you are designing your own landscape. You're not copying. As artists, you design, you learn and develop and you design your own. I will be marking these based on skill and on uniqueness of design. I would quite like you to send me your inspiration board along with your picture at the end of the project. So I can see that you've not copied, but you've drawn from the ideas. So that would be something that would be really fantastic. And you can send me that after today's lesson um, with your sketched outline 
or just send me a few pictures that you were looking at, it's up to you. Uh, and then finally, again, I've got a zoomed in section of a David Hockney one. So you can see I've used several David Hockney ones and then one of my own and another photo that I found on the internet. I would like at least one David Hockney photo that you've used. Okay, moving on. So how are you gonna start sketching out your design? So you will need some paper. Um, now I would recommend that if you have any white card or any thicker paper, I've used watercolor paper, that you work on that. Because this is a painting task and eventually you'll be painting it, it's a little bit thicker. So if you've got some white or cream card, you've got or some white paper, I would recommend that you use that because it's going to be easier. Paper's not going to rip. Uh, maybe you could ask mum, dad, whoever's at home to just pick you some up. I know that the shops are starting to open now. Um, and obviously, you know, you will use this often. So it is a very good thing to invest in. Um, equally, you can work in your book. Um, but I would prefer it if you worked on a thick paper if you have access to it. It's just going to be easier for you. Okay, so I've got my paper. Um, and I've just got a couple of pencils, a rubber and a sharpener. So you need to start by having always a sharp pencil. The outcomes are going to be a lot more successful when you've got a sharp pencil. And it's always handy to have a rubber on hand as well. So a couple of tips for creating your landscape. Spend some time looking at the drawings in front of you. Um, your page should be this way. A landscape goes landscape. Okay. Um, that's what we call it when it goes that way. Horizontal, if you want to call it, or landscape. Um, so have it in front of you that way. You will need to constantly look at the photos in front of you, whether it's on your phone, on your laptop, um, and then obviously back at your paper. That is, is how you're going to create a successful design. Um, I'm going to show you really, really quickly some techniques for creating this. But you should spend around 10 minutes today collecting images and reading through all the instructions, maybe 15, and then half an hour to 40 minutes just sketching out this, nothing else. There shouldn't be any shading. Um, you're just going to sketch out your design like this. See, there's no, no shading. It's just a line drawing. Um, I've obviously put some more simplistic ones in and then some more difficult ones and some tips here as well. So no shading, just sketched out. So I'm going to start by using a softer pencil. Um, if you've got a pencil kit at home, great. Make sure you're using... Um, one that presses lightly and I'm just going to sketch a rough line, it doesn't have to be neat, a rough line very, very carefully. You can barely see it on the page, it's very soft, I've not pressed hard on my pencil. I've held the end of my pencil like this, I've not gripped it too hard and I've just sketched. By sketching I mean you've held it lightly in your hand and just gone back and forth, back and forth a few times. So it doesn't really touch the page too harshly. Then I'm going to put, so I've got my horizon line now. I've got my horizon line. And I'm just going to mark my midpoint of perspective there. Now, you don't have to work from one point perspective like this. You don't have to have a vanishing point in the distance. Because if you're adding mountains and things in, it's going to work slightly differently. Same with this kind of drawing here, which they have actually done in portrait. Um, I'm going to start by using, um, I'm going to work my way from top to bottom, it doesn't matter too much, um, but I really like the clouds here, so I'm going to start by just creating some really loose markings of where my clouds would go. I'm not just scribbling, I am looking at my clouds as I go, I'm considering the textures and the mark making, this is what it's all about this task, is showing the skills that you've learned so I'm being delicate, you can see I'm pressing so lightly on my pencil and you can't see the lines too heavily. That's because you're going to be painting this and we don't want to see the pencil marks through it. Also, if you make a mistake, it makes it very hard to rub out if you've pressed hard. So I really like the layer of clouds here. Um, they're really delicate and then they become in larger clumps. So I'm going to incorporate that into my drawing here. Then I'm going to move on. The mountains will be high up, so I'm going to add some mountains that go into my clouds. Again, pressing lightly. I'm looking at the mountains as observation. 
They go right into the sky, past my clouds. And I'm using Mark making quick sketching to do that. Now this, this for once doesn't need too many inner details. You need the outer details, but things like inside here, you're gonna paint. So if you add really tiny details, it's just gonna be a waste of time because you're gonna have to paint over them anyway. So they should be loose details like this. You can see that's taken me a couple of minutes. Um, obviously you're gonna spend a lot more time on this. Um, I'm then going to think about my foreground, add another mountain. It doesn't matter if you overlap some of your lines, because again, area is going to be rubbed out and painted. You might want to add a sun in your cloud somewhere. Again, just really, really quick, sketchy, loose lines. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my mid-ground, the middle section of my painting. My drawing will be a painting. Um, and I really like the way Hockney uses different sections of fields. This is why I chose this one, different sections. So I'm going to have a go at layering some sections. Don't forget the size. If something is further away, it will be smaller. As it comes to the foreground, it will get bigger. So you could almost do like a jigsaw of fields, like I'm doing here. You could even add a pond or a lake somewhere. You could add some trees, again using these loose mark making techniques. And then in my foreground, I'm going to start to add in this large bush in this drawing, because I quite like that. Could add a fence. There's so many possibilities. What I'm really looking for is that you've taken your time with this, you've not rushed it, and that by the end of the lesson, you have something that looks kind of like one of these. I will know the people that have really taken care with their drawing. I can see if you've just rushed it. Really take your care with this. Do not rush it. It might seem like a long time to spend half an hour, 40 minutes on, but there's lots more I need to do on this and I've probably spent about five minutes on it, maybe, potentially. Um, but obviously I've been doing this a long time so I can do it very quickly. Um, so please, there's two tasks I want you to focus on. The one is that you create an inspiration board like this. So you create a Word document with some photos on, um, of what you're inspired by, you could have your own photos on it. It should have at least one David Hockney photo, or you could do it on your phone um, in the Pix Stitch free collage app. I will put the details of that in the PowerPoint. Um, and I would like you today to send to me that photo montage, and then you need to send to me your sketched out drawing on an A4 page. It could be in your book, but preferably on some nice thick white card or watercolour paper or painting paper if you've got any or you can get a hold of some. So there's two tasks, two main tasks. Well, complete the starter activity as always, the questions at the beginning. Main task one is to create an inspiration board. Main task two is to create a sketched out drawing, pressing very lightly with your pencil, using the inspiration board to create your own ideas. And then finally, as always, you can create a what went well and even better if for your drawing. Do not write on this drawing at all. Don't put the date or title on this drawing. This is going to be your final piece and they will be displayed in class. Um, this is why I'd quite like it if you could do it on card so then I can put them on the wall in school. Um, if not, I'll have to photocopy some in colour. Hopefully that is clear on what you're doing today. Um, all the details you need are in the video and in the PowerPoint. Um, if you have any questions, please get in touch. My final request is just please take your time. This is your final piece that you are getting assessed on. You'll be working on this specific piece um, for the next four weeks now. This is week one, and then there'll be three lessons of painting. Another tip um, is if you don't have any watercolour or, or acrylic paints at home, um, it would be great if you could get some to complete this task. 
Um, otherwise, you will have to do it using tea or coffee stain. So please, please, please um, ask mum or dad or whoever's at home if maybe they could spare a couple of pounds. If not, um, like I said, tea or coffee stain is fine. I'm going to put some links to some um, cheap paints up on the PowerPoint as well. So you can, you know, pop into a shop and order some um, if you have access to that. Please don't worry if you don't. Um, you can use tea or coffee stain. That is fine. But it's really interesting if we use paints because you can create the different shades of David Hockney's bright colours. Hope that's clear. Have a great week, Year 7, and take care. And I will speak to you all next week. Thanks very much. Bye.